What's going on guys, Culprit here, and welcome to my Timber and Stone Let's Play season, and it still pains me to say this a little bit, season 3. Uh, we've left the the tragedy that is season 2. Uh, everybody got wiped out as you saw. Uh, spider matriarchs are OP. I filed the email off. <laughs> um, you guys just recently saw that. Yesterday, I would imagine. I don't quite know. Uh, for me, it's been several days. I got way ahead, and that's one of the kind of things with this game. Is you get way ahead. And, you know, I just want to play, 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 play. I really love this game. I get engrossed in it. I get immersed in it. And I'll bang out a two or three hour session. And out of that two or three hours, I'll get five, six episodes. So one night of play for me could mean a week's worth of videos for you guys. So that's one of the pitfalls of doing Let's Plays like this is I want to play, but I want your input to affect. You know, I don't want you guys giving me input at episode two. And then you don't see that input take effect until episode 10. That's, that's it's tough have to, you know, kind of exercise some patience and, and discipline sometimes. And, and it's weird because I don't want to lose my flow at the same time. Um, so I tried to do that here. I, 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 t I stepped away for two days <laughs> since that, that season two fell. I thought about it. I strategized like crazy. Um, I've read some forums, kind of educated myself because I found that I needed some help. Uh, you know, I, I just kind of like things like how to kill a spider matriarch, which nobody really tells you because I just feel like I don't know how to do that. Like, like necromancers, I feel like, all right, I see how I can do that. They're hard, but I see how to do it. But matriarchs, geez, I, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little more, but man, they, they are, they are so hard. <laughs> One-shotting people. Now, I assume if I get the best armor and stuff, maybe they'll be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe a little better. I guess the best strategy is to not stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. I'm going to try some ballistas maybe if we can get to that point. I don't know. So um, we're going to kind of get right into episode uh, season three here. We're going to do away with the lofty endgame goals that I had for season two. I was doing that with, an, with a mind towards my first season, which was rather easy. We see now the goal is going to be to survive. And, uh, you know, I, I've got some ideas. I've got some strategies. I've got some designs that I want to ask you guys your input for. So if you're watching this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little video. I'm going to put it up unlisted. I'm going to link it in this description. You guys can then go click that link, watch that video. It's not going to appear on my channel normally. You have to kind of go to it through this video. And this way, only the people that are going to see that are people that might be interested in giving feedback. And what I did was I actually, I've been on graph paper kind of drawing stuff out. And I apologize for this, for the pause screen, but I just want to talk about this for a minute. I'll, I'll get to some action and, and walk you through the new settlement a little bit. Um, I went into actually Prison Architect, if you guys watched that Let's Play, the design screen, because it has this little blueprint mode that's really kind of handy, because I didn't know how to take what I've done on my graph paper and, and you know, scribble and scrabble and, and jotting things down, and that's what I do. I obsess on things, and I've been reading and writing out game plans and strategies, and of course, designing on graph paper. Um, so I, I thought of that, and I so I, I mocked it up a little bit and did some designs just so I could visually show you guys. So I'll do a video with that, explaining some of my ideas and concepts of to help improve my defenses. And what I want is I want you guys to help me and and help me give me some input, give me some ideas. I know uh, Luton's actually made a lot of suggestions already, um, and we're, you're, that's still on season two. You guys haven't even gotten to season three yet, so I want more of that. So I want you guys to help because this is going to be a group effort here. So make sure you click that link in the description, go to that video, and that'll be a nice little forum for us to kind of have a discussion on, you know, fortifications, defenses, you know, things that could, you know, I, I don't, I want to say weaponry, but I don't think that's correct, but basically defensive systems and what we can do in, in as far as our architecture and engineering and design to increase our chances to live. So without kind of getting any more off to that and making you guys look at a static image, this is the new map. Now, unfortunately, I have the fog, uh, the render distance turned way down because I am recording. Um, there's nothing crazy about this map. It is pretty much a flat, uh, sparsely treed map. Um, I chose it for very uh, <laughs> functional reasons. Um, it, it's a decent map. It's got some hills. It's not just totally flat. I don't like totally flat maps. Um, I picked this location, and you see some work started, because I'll know i explain that in a second. Let's just actually get this rolling. Um, you guys see these start doing some work. Uh, I picked these maps. I, I took about an hour, and I just kind of pulled up maps. And if you guys have played this, you'll know. Um, the basic stats for this map are, I want to say, uh, frequent uh, tin, abundant copper, abundant iron, abundant coal, which is pretty awesome as far as minerals. And I think it's like frequent chickens and common uh, boar and sheep. Uh, no water, as you saw. Um, and then when I spawned in, you know, that's always the thing. You find this nice spot. You look on the map. You're like, okay, this is cool. I can build here. I can do this. And then you spawn in, and you're hoping you get a, a good uh, fit. And oh, there you go. There's some designs I will show you in a second. Um, you see, I did start with wheat seeds. Uh, no, I did not start with wheat seeds. I apologize. Like cotton seeds. Actually, I guess I'll just show you the actual in the ground. I started with some cotton, which is great. I can make really good beds. So we'll be having that very soon. I probably actually need something to sh 
to pick that, do I? Or no? Let's just click. I've never used cotton, so I'm going to see. Like, I know shears just for a tailor. Okay. So it should be, do I need a certain hoe to get cotton? I don't know. We'll have to get back to that. You can make super good beds, which is nice. I uh, have some flaxseed, which is going to be for rope and training dummies. And I have some corn for food, obviously. I might even have other food, but I'm only putting one food in for now because food is not my huge priority. I want to get cotton rolling. I want to get flax rolling. Um, I was hoping to get, like, flax and wheat because with wheat I can um, domesticate animals. I can make beds. Not as good beds, but I can still make beds. And a food, obviously. You need a food. Uh, I didn't get that. So we're, we're going to have our Achilles heel, as you guys watch, as we, we get started here, is going to be wheat i need to get wheat early but the problem is i have no plans on doing a haul right away the plan is going to be to just not do a haul and just get defensive and i think one of my big problems in season two is i did a haul too quickly and what happens is the animals basically run right at your hauls <laughs> i mean they just come right at you um and that was a big problem you guys i mean oh, i don't want to steal i would love a steel hammer but that's not gonna work uh you guys saw i mean they came they came right at me and and that was that was a problem one I do not want to uh, do again, basically. I'm sorry, I'm a little preoccupied. Beginnings are very important, and, and that's kind of why I started without you guys. So I'm going to run you through the guys in just a second as they're doing their work. Big ass bro, no stories. Okay. You can see I started some of the work. I've renamed everybody. I've got them all situated, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that when I get to it. Um, you can see some of the designs here, and I'll pull it up. Now, you see I took the hill here. I've kind of stolen a little of our idea of a castle on the hill. Not a ton, you know, obviously there's a hill in the castle, but I'm, I'm gonna eventually rip this down. But you see, I'm going for a big castle here, or a big defensive wall. Everything about this season, season three, is gonna be about survival and defense. Uh, that's our, we're preoccupied with defense. Uh, and then we're gonna figure out how to get a hall and roads involved. And that's gonna be the tricky part because animals just, I mean, the animals, the, the enemy mobs go crazy for the hall. And that is it, you're announcing yourself to the world, you're opening yourself for death, as you guys saw. So. The focus here is obviously you can see I'm building a moat and basically I'm getting a one block wall. I'm going to do a two block wall as soon as I can get one, but I want to get one around and I'm digging down. So like right here, I had one, I had a mine away one piece of dirt and I added one wall. I have a two block wall now, boom, right out of the chute. So I think by doing that and being careful about, you know, looking around and making sure it's two everywhere, I think I can get away with a big, get that out of there, a big settlement. You know, I, I can do it. So we'll, we'll see. I want to get fortified enough so that I'm not going to get any surprise. You can see it's getting to be night already. And that's going to be a problem. Let me just add some light. Let me go over here. Because I don't want to die again. <laughs> Duh, I know that sounds silly and all. But it's the truth. I, I really would like to survive quite a while this time and, and get going and get into the end of the game or end game because you know there seems to be some good good things going on with that so where is he he's got cobblestone in my I'm, I'm basically putting it up as fast as i can build it uh, who can i run now this guy needs to i'm gonna make him a carpenter real quick just go and fix those things for me build those campfires uh basically i want big walls and here's i have some ideas for like i'm gonna t tell you over here is gonna be the main gate you see how it opens up on this large plane. This will give me some room to work with hall and and a village if we do get to it. If we're able to pacify the countryside, I, I would like to do the village plan. Um, eventually, I'm going to have, the, obviously, the miner dig the moat around, uh, the, around the whole place. Probably two, at least two blocks deep, two blocks wide. Give me a nice, strong moat. Uh, there, you know, if I can do that, I think I'll be in good shape. Just wanted to check something over there quick. And then what I'm going to do, instead of digging underground, I'm going to shave this hill off. This is going to be my mine, just bringing this hill down. But I'm going to leave this hill here, and up here is where I'm going to build the keep. This is where the, the holdfast is going to be, the, the house. The, and that's where the beds are going to be, because I will be able to build some beds relatively soon, which will be great. And, you know, we'll have that going for us. I want the guys to be able to sleep in there. And I do want it to be a fallback option. So when if the wall is breached, which I'm going to be, you know, putting layers of, uh... Oh, gosh, I'm having a trouble uh, figuring out my words redundancy yeah layers of redundancy on my on my single gate one gate this time again i'm going to get into that in that length video i'm going to talk about it in the main let's play as well but then there'll be another building that i can fall people back to you know the farmers and things that can't really defend themselves they can get in there and they, they can then defend themselves that's the plan so right now i am obviously rushing 
to get as fortified as I can. It's obviously not going to happen right away. I'm going to hope I can survive the first night with no friendlies coming and checking us out, but we'll see. Um, that's going to be a little hairy. I won't pretend. Uh, he's building that, and then he can switch. So let's take you around and introduce you to everybody. Everybody's changed up a little bit. I use most of the same names. Everybody's on the list that was in. If you didn't make it in the first group, you're going to be a migrant. Don't worry. Um, you're probably better off waiting until I have a little more established uh, build going on. So let's see here. Per turn you back to a herder. Hopefully now you'll go kill everybody. Go get a tool and kill everybody. That would be great. There we go. You're going to grab it. Okay, so then let's just move, roll through. And I'm going to talk a little bit about So we got Natalia again. You're going to be the herder. I'm going to try to have a herder going. Obviously, I need to get some wheat uh, before you can actually be very effective. So right now what you're doing is you're running around. You're scooping up all the animals. Then I'm going to kill you. That's going to be... But not kill you, I'm going to kill the animals. That's going to be my initial intake of feathers, which is, is going to be incredibly vital to me. That That's going to be my Achilles heel, feathers, because I need them for arrows, because the whole defense of this place is going to be based around um, archers defending the door, uh, defending the gate. So vitally important. You might meander off and do some farming, do some mining, whatever it may be, as, the mo as a, there are no animals on the map and you have nothing to do. But you're, I'm going to try to get you back to herder as quickly as possible. I just got to figure out how I'm going to do that. Uh, we got Luton. Luton is right now, he is a miner. He's got good vision, charismatic, and disloyal. He is going to be our archer. He's going to be our professional soldier. Right now, there's nothing for him to do. There's nothing for him to train on, so he's helping mine the, the, the initial moat, which I need manpower for anyway. I figured the good vision was a good match with an archer that will be at the, at the gate kind of keeping watch. I'm hoping that means he'll have maybe further archery range, or at least he'll be able to see enemies sooner. Uh, the charismatic and disloyal, I, I, who knows. Um... But welcome back, Luton. You are going to be our professional soldier, our, our man-at-arms, if you will. Uh, Hero almost. he's going to be our builder. I believe that is his uh, way. Yeah, hard worker, quick learner. I paid a little more attention to these traits, guys. I, you know, I kind of picked it up on the on the forums a little bit, and I don't know exactly what they do. But uh, like I said, I'm paying more attention to it, that is for sure. Oh, you are sleeping. We cannot have you sleeping. That's Polygon Wizard. He is going to be our stonemason. He is going to be everything basically he's going to be probably you'll probably never go outside these walls if, if you are outside these walls we're in trouble stonemason you're gonna be carpenter blacksmith tailor you're probably gonna be our trader too as well we will have to see you are charismatic you're an overeater and you're a quick learner the reason i did this is again i said he's probably gonna be my trader so i figured that charisma would help with that quick learner of course is gonna be very important Overeater is kind of a detriment. I don't want you to challenge, but I didn't have too many options as I went through everything. So that is Mr. Polygon. Let's see. We got Natalia. I talked about you with the herder. Rusty Walker, welcome to wood chopping, Rust. Let's talk here. Quick learner. Now you're gonna go chop wood and you're gonna you know do it pretty hard at first, but you're probably gonna change to something else later once I get the fort enclosed. Now you're always gonna chop some wood, but I'm gonna end up planting my own wood in here. And that's one of the reasons I made it as big as I did. I want to have plenty of room. Because here's the wall. I am going to have some defenses in here involved in the front gate. I'm going to have some defenses out here involved in the front gate that will eat up some room. I'm going to put kind of a big hole fest or, uh, you know, a, a tower, a keep in here. So, and obviously probably have the farms end up down here. So I'm going to actually be using quite a bit of space. I am going to kind of plant some trees. I started doing it at the end of season two. I never really got to talk to you guys about it because I died too quick. <laughs> but uh, they started getting in the way, the trees. So I want to kind of have a little more space but you're going to kind of be in charge of the trees inside the compound i'm probably not going to chop too many trees outside we'll see uh, but then you're probably going to change to something to kind of be a help out all over maybe you'll end up learning you're definitely going to learn some archery you're probably going to help mining it sometimes building possibly farming possibly so uh, you're not going to be set in your role but for now your primary role is wood chopping uh, mr duets is back on the farms uh, again he did a great job previously and i just it's one of the most important roles i figured boom uh, let's look at your traits are overeater. Ah, it seemed fitting for a farmer and a quick learner. Again, quick learner is very important for a farmer. Farmer is probably the most important skill, excuse me, for me to level up initially. Uh, right now, I do have a forager I will get to. Um, actually, might as well just keep going. Uh, I do have a forager out there that's kind of supporting us right now. But as enemies start to become more populated, I want to get Forager out. I'm going to have Forager come back in here and do other roles, be it minor again, just like the wood chopper. Less about foraging, more about something helping inside the walls. Probably actually turn into a farmer to help Jowetz. Um, but while he's leveling up and can't really sustain the colony, 
I want that forager to be out there helping me do that. So let's get right to them. But uh, right now, Andre, I decided not to make you a forager again because you, you died first, and I figured that wasn't fair. So I changed it to one of the more safe jobs. You're going to be a miner. You're a hard worker, bad vision, courageous, and clumsy. Th he was kind of like the last character I didn't know what to do with. Hard worker seems to fit with miner. Bad vision doesn't really seem to matter down in the hole. Uh, courageous, yeah, it's got to be kind of brave down in a mine, right? And then the clumsy, that kind of doesn't work with a miner, <laughs> but we'll see. You're going to drop a lot of rocks and tools on your feet, I guess. So uh, you're going to be my miner, probably going to be your solitary job most of the time. Um, and that just is what it is. Resource crate I need, huh? Okay, storage. This is going to be kind of challenging to keep, you know, to kind of have everything where I need it because I, I, none of this is I assume I'm going to kind of landfill this and raise this area up um, so let's again let's cycle through out oh, there's Mark S he's going to be our forager where the heck is he though is he sleep he's sleeping right here is he not okay who can I make a quick carpenter or is he going to make it nope let's make you just a quick carpenter so you can make it just watch him real quick we have mark s is the forager right now he like i said is gonna forage he's gonna help you know support the content. I basically talked about him already he is disloyal overeater quick learner now no offense here mark i, I did this but i made this decision before i put your name to it i kind of put the names randomly i just kind of picked the name and, and put it to a guy um disloyal overeater obviously bad qualities to have overeater is basically i think the general strategy that i saw as i read some forums is to put your overeaters as the foragers, as the people that are out, maybe a wood chopper or a herder that are out in danger's way. This way, if they do die, at least you got rid of the overeater. You know, I think that's the logic on that. Um, quick learner is good too for foraging. And then whatever else he'll do, like I said, he'll probably go to the farm. So again, I'll have another quick learner on the farm. Always a good thing. Um, so he's going to be our forager. And again, he's going to evolve and change later on. Luton again is mining. Here almost is my builder. He's probably the best, you know, hard worker and quick learner is a great combo to me. I need another resource crate. Great. Polly, I spoke about. Did I not? Yep. Trader. Natalia. Did I go through everybody? I think I did go through everybody. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I covered everybody. We should have eight people. Haven't lost anybody yet. <laughs> I stress the yet, as you guys know. Did I put the wrong crate in? Is that No, it should be a resource crate. So I'll just put another one right next to it. Pull up storage. Food. No. All right. Food and seas. I'm confused. Okay, so this is a problem, though, is because... Oh, I do have one copper ingot. So I'll put one right here for now. Yeah, that's fine. That takes what? Carpenter? Yes, it does. All right, where did... All right, I've got to kind of do a little look around. Make sure I'm not... Because I'm assuming these guys are all going to kind of sleep now. Looting is mining away. Good man. Like to keep somebody awake. Where did All right, I want to look at our design again? I'll give you a better look at that as well. Okay, so I want this stump to get out of here. And I'm gonna plug that as soon as he takes that. Everything else is kind of good. Get the stumps away now. Just what is that? That's a bush. I can stay there. These trees can go. I'm not too worried about trees. Trees are now a renewable resource. Uh, like, literally, I can plant them inside, as I spoke about. Previously, like, one of the cardinal rules when you were building your settlement was to leave some trees alone. Like, make your settlement big enough so that you incorporate trees into your into your build and you leave them there. Because, you know, when you had to hunker up and you were in trouble, you wanted to make sure that, you know, you had some wood to help sustain you. So... That has obviously changed this time. We don't have to worry about trees so much. I gotta always plant some more. Gonna clear these all out of here. So I'm very worried that I'm gonna, you know, have a surprise visit. I am going to get rid of this because this. My idea was to run around. Ah, oh, jeez. Do I have another one? Yeah. See, I, I started doing. I'm glad I just saw that. Because that would have ended up getting my miner killed. I almost am sure of it. Okay, so I am totally exposed right now. This is a bad, bad thing right now for me. But there's just, just no way around it. So I want to click on somebody and see where my herder went. Because he's kind of disappeared. Herder. Oh, he's no, he isn't sleeping. So let's just make him 
the carpenter to make the resource crate and the barrel. This fine gentleman can keep digging away. Now I need, why is that a different color? I don't really know. Better actually dig that out. Like I said, it's kind of, I'm assuming that. making sure I've got everything I need so I'm hoping the strategy here is to get this done quickly is to like I said it's kind of a double whammy this is, this is a big you know big build here obviously what the hell is that I'm, I'm confused oh I see okay oh god what was that kind of give him a quick look here this this part of my wall I tried to make a little irregular that's fine just want to make sure everything that needs to get done is being done as best as it can for now I have to really inspect this. I'll probably do it all actually off camera when I can focus a little bit better I hope you guys can see all right I'm sorry that it's you know a little faded and actually you know what I'm probably gonna move on I, I walked you through everybody I've showed you the setup there's gonna be a link in the description and I'm gonna kind of outline you some of my plans obviously you can see here a little bit pretty big it's I think it's like I want to say it's like 80 wide this way I got some big towers set up here in the corners big enough for ballistas I will add some big towers here like this is gonna be the main gate right here big tower here big tower here I'm gonna have kind of a walkway you know that goes out so the idea is if you want to attack this gate everything here is gonna be dug out in time you have to come up and walk on this little walkway that's kind of accordion zigzags back and forth all the while you're in range of my archers the idea is hopefully they can get five six seven eight arrows into you each guy before you even get to the gate because as we saw the gates are not very strong they get through them very quickly if you do get through the gate, what is going to happen is as you enter the gate, again, same thing. That I'm going to have walls built up, and you're going to be tunnel funneled this way and around this way. And in the middle, I'm going to have a large platform, again, and with a footbridge to connect to this big tower. So these two big towers are initially going to be shooting in here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, they can then fall back to this middle island, and they can shoot the guys as they go all the way around it in a 360 degree. And it's going to come this way straight. And over here, I'm going to have like almost a grandstand, I guess is the best way, where all my other citizens that aren't very good fighters can get up on here with their one or two level archery, it doesn't matter, and just shoot arrows as a last resort as they're walking down this little choke point. Again, I'm going to walk you through the video and explain this a little bit better in a, in a better design mode for you. Those guys just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> so, uh, people are waking up, it looks like. Some of them, anyway. And, uh, yeah, so that's going to be the idea. I may add, like, another tower over here. Maybe one over in the middle of this Well, I don't know. We're going to see. I can always add those later. The idea right now is to get defenses up, get protected, and start getting resources rolling in. Now, like I said, the big issue for me is going to be getting wheat and how we do that. So if you guys have played and you have some you know, tr tips and tricks, because here's, here's my pledge to you guys. I'm going to try to play this legit, straight up. But I'm going to tell you right now, to survive, I may have to use some mechanics. And by mechanics, I mean either like not putting the hall in my castle i'm thinking maybe even put it out out here so that all the monsters are attracted to here they're not necessarily attracted right to my to my castle and then i could send a sortie out to come and clear this out as i get a, a, a merchant or something the other idea i had if i'm if possible dig a tunnel out here with a big tower like a fortified tower for my archers so my archers can literally get from my castle all the way out into this tunnel without being harmed or in danger climb up the stairs at the top of the tower have the hall out here so all the skeletons and everything that are going to gather here goblin skeletons even spiders potentially my archers can just rain death down on them kind of from some safety i don't know if anybody's going to just break through the wall of the tower there'll be no door so I, these are ideas. These are ideas and, and input from you guys that I'm looking for. So if you could help me out with that, that would be great. Uh, and we'll discuss these and we'll figure these out as we go. But the first job is to, to live through the first night, which is always an adventure. So we'll see how we do. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Appreciate you watching episode two. Sorry to let you down. It just got overwhelmed. I, I you know, man, the, the, the goblin marauders on wolves really crippled us. 
didn't end up really mattering because I feel like those spider matriarchs would have killed us off anyway. I had nothing, to, nothing, no hope of killing them. Uh, just nothing for them. But we're gonna, we're gonna improve on that. We're gonna come up with some new ideas, some concepts. We're gonna test them, and we're gonna try to learn a lesson from episode two, apply it to episode th or season th four, three. I don't know. I'm all flustered now, but. I will come back to you next episode, hopefully in the daytime so you can see a little better and made some progress as I just continue to work on the walls and get a little more fortified. And I will talk to you soon, guys. Take care.